Hey everybody, Nick Espinoza, your chief security fanatic here. And today I actually have a very special guest with me today. Uh, this is Dan O'Dowd. He is the CEO of Green Hill Software, but also the founder of the Dawn Project, which is primarily why we're talking to him today. And Dan, thank you so much for coming on my radio show. Thank you for having me. Great, great. Now, can you explain to my audience what the Dawn Project is? The Dawn Project uh, is dedicated to well, our, our slogan is making computers safe for humanity. The problem is that over the last five or 10 years that people have hooked up all the things our lives depend on to the internet. Um, all, the, all the cars are hooked up to the internet. The power grid's hooked up to the internet. The hospitals are hooked up to the internet. The water treatment plants and the dams and those systems are all hooked up to the internet. And most of them hooked it up with basically either Windows or Linux or open source software that, that they just downloaded off the uh, off the, the web, off the internet. And, and almost all that software has bugs in it that you can just go onto the market and buy vulnerabilities, the whole thriving market and vulnerabilities on all these products. And so when you created a thing where all of these things are connected, one person can conceivably take them all down at the same time, and that's catastrophic. With the power grid, yeah, you could take everything down, that would be bad, but that's not actually the worst thing you could do. If you gain control of a, a electric generation plant, um, you just, and you can, get, you can get into it, you can turn up the generator to red, past red line. You just turn it up. What happens when you leave something up past red line for a while? It will break. I don't know how, it, that's why red line, that's what red line's for, it tells you. Right running it above here it's the fan blades are going to blow off it's going to catch on fire it's going to melt down i don't know but what will end up is it won't work anymore if you if you did that to all the power generating plants in the united states we'd be living in 1820 right there'd be internet there'd be no radio there'd be no your, your electric car can't be charged your gasoline car can't be filled up because the gas station requires electricity to pump the gas so Basically, you're stuck with one charge or one load of gasoline. That's how far you can go. Maybe a few hundred miles. If you do, they can't get anywhere either. And there's no way to bring in food. There's no way to bring in anything that you need. You don't even know what happened. You, you'd be sitting at home saying, yeah, the power will come back on in a few hours. After a day, it's like, where's the power company? I need to make a call. But you can't make a call, so you can't find out. A week later, it's still down. What do you do? Uh, you right. migrate, try to go somewhere else, but it's no better there. It's a complete catastrophic meltdown of society. Uh, electric cars. You, If you have a self-driving car and you hook it on the internet, well, because of automatic updates, all the self-driving cars from one manufacturer will run the identical code. If you find a way to hack one of them, you can hack all of them. They're all in the internet. You send out your malware to infect all that company's cars for say some model year and and then you send it a directive okay get out of wherever you are if you're in a garage get out of the you know you know open the garage door if you're in a parking lot get out of the parking lot find the nearest reasonably large uh, street and accelerate to 100 miles an hour drive the wrong driving the wrong way if 10 million cars did that in five minutes millions of people would be dead and no one would know what happened and no one would be able to stop it. There wouldn't be any warnings or alerts. Just 10 minutes later, millions are dead and, and no one wants to get in a car anymore. It's right. catastrophic and we built it, it's there. It's what they're doing right now. People are building all of these systems with no concern at all for, to make them so that they can't be hacked. And we shouldn't do it. We should do these things if we're gonna make us vulnerable. These are national security problems. Right, right. And and this is exactly why I wanted to have you on my radio show as well as my daily videos and podcasts is because this is something that I, I talk about actually quite a bit. Uh, the last example that I gave was water and wastewater districts here in the United States. They're interconnected on, on the internet. Uh, they're, they're wholly inadequately um, defended for cybersecurity. And we've seen hacking incidents that could introduce things like lie in the water supplies, you know, which we saw in Oldsmar, Florida. So it, it's it's something that that is kind of just super important. And I will also say this, that pretty much every car I've owned since the Bluetooth era, I've been successfully able to break into. 
using known vulnerabilities in Bluetooth. I mean, that's part of my day job. And, and, and so here we are. But the reason why I found you um, was actually really interesting. And as my regular followers uh, of my daily podcasts and videos know, um, a couple of days ago on August 8th, we're sitting here on August 10th, um, I actually released a video talking about California's DMV, their Department of Motor Vehicles, accusing Tesla of engaging in deceptive practices around the marketing of their driver assistance systems, which they call, as you know, autopilot and full self-driving here in the United States. So the next day, um, I saw that you released, or at least pinned on your Twitter account, a video of actual Teslas that you were testing, being tested by your organization. And basically, they were unfortunately plowing over these poor, unfortunate mannequin children that you just had you know, in this video, meaning the car wouldn't stop. It was just hitting these kids. And so can you tell us um, a little bit about that, about your... Uh, you know, your your thoughts on on Tesla and everything, because you, you had a really interesting uh, video, which is essentially a commercial, you know, basically informing people of this, this serious problem. Can you tell us about this? It is a commercial and it's running nationwide right now. It's on, on, on TV. Great, great. YouTube and on Twitter and, you know, we're, we're, we're putting it out. Um, this, this, this actually started, if you go to go back to the beginning of my campaign it was in january i ran a full page ad in the walls in the, the new york times mm -hmm. and uh, it basically said this we've tested this car and about every eight minutes it has a safety defect it, it exhibits a safety defect it does something that if you did it in a driver's test that the, the instructor would would flunk you just do it once you're flunked mm -hmm. um turn left out of a right turn light i mean something really dumb it does that all the time um, we discovered about every 36 minutes, it would crash into something if the driver didn't grab the wheel. Hmm. Um, and, and this has been going on, on for a while. I've been running commercials. I've been running ads, putting in, in the, and, and up to today. But about somewhere around June, um, something happened. A guy put some videos on the internet showing he put them to see if, they would, if it would stop. One of them was a barbecue grill. Nope, wouldn't stop for a barbecue grill. Mm -hmm. He put an office chair, wouldn't stop for the office chair, a whole bunch of stuff. And I said, really? Set? Could that possibly be true? Mm -hmm. There was another company that was running uh, called Luminar. It was, it was basically putting a kid in front of a Tesla and seeing if it would run him down. And I just said, is that really true? Could that possibly be true? So I went out, I bought a, a Tesla and hired some guys to do it. And we ran the test to see what would it run over and what wouldn't it and it would run over little children uh, a little push stroller just an ordinary sort of yeah. low hand stroller it would take that out every time um we put a beach ball in front of it it would it would hit a beach ball it hits all sorts of things um and i couldn't believe it i couldn't believe it so we built it we we hired a hollywood crew and we made a commercial and we put it out there yesterday it was yesterday right tuesday yeah yeah the ninth and we started showing it uh, out to the world and people are just <laughs> what i'm saying is if you're designing a self-driving car i mean it's called full self-driving and autopilot you should not it, it you should have to prove your self-driving car doesn't run over children in a crosswalk before you're allowed to put it on the road They've given it out to a hundred thousand people. They sold it. I don't give it. Cost twelve thousand dollars. A hundred thousand people are running that software right now. They've been downloaded the software, and by the end of the year, Elon Musk said he's going to let all their customers have it. So that's hundreds of thousands of millions. I don't know. A yeah. Huge number. It, it's yeah. just you can't. It, it's it's crazy to put that thing out on the road. Yeah. And it. Go ahead. It doesn't work. I mean it. It, it it does not drive you competently. You have to save yourself. I, I have a video, it has to come out yet, it'll be published in a few weeks. Of, uh, I was in the car, I was, I was the passenger, not the driver. And we're driving along this country road, perfectly good road, got a nice yellow line down the middle. And this other BMW starts coming down the other side, everything's fine, except it's actually got its tires on the yellow line when it's, when it's coming around the turn. And at, when it was 57 feet in front of it, the, the Model S, the full self-driving, turned left in front of that car, 57 feet, when it was 57 feet away. And the driver of my car grabbed the wheel 
and ripped it back to the right with 0.4 seconds to spare, he saved our lives. If he had not done that, we would have headlonged direct smash into that BMW. Now, some people say, well, we were warned that this software wasn't perfect, right? I mean, it does say that. When you turn it on, it says, it might do the wrong thing at the worst time. That's a hell of a warning. Well, what's the wrong thing? Turning left oh, and going over the yellow line, what's the wrong time? When there's a BMW 57 feet away, I guess they warned me that this could happen. It's insane that they would sell a product that could do that, but that BMW guy never signed any waiver, right? right. They make you sign waivers with, before you can run the software, but the BMW guy, he'd be dead if we had crashed into him, headlong into him, you know, it's crazy. Right. It's on the it'd be on the road. Take it back in the lab and make it so it doesn't turn left in front of BMWs. It doesn't turn left in front of trains, which it does. It doesn't and it and doesn't run over kids in a in a crosswalk. Take it back to the lab and work on it and fix all those bugs. By the way, I've got a bunch more I'll be showing. Fix Please, all those. Yeah. Then maybe you can put it back on the road. Yeah, yeah, and 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 that's and that's just it because you know in the video that I that I put out bef the day before yours and obviously yours has way more play. I'm not even comparing them. Yours was professionally done. Mine is guerrilla filmmaking. You know, um, in that I, I I also mentioned according to CNBC that hundred thousand cars that you're talking about are beta. They're called the CNBC was calling these like a beta test car. Uh, and, and so if there's 100,000 of these out there in beta test, you know, just for my audience, from a software development standpoint, you know, as well as I do, beta means it's not a finished product. Beta means it's in testing. You're basically expecting your 100,000 drivers to basically report back and say, oh, it turned left in front of a train or it almost hit a BMW or it hit mannequin children and all of that. I mean, that is, I think, absolutely like, crazy that that you would have basically something that could essentially be weaponized. I mean, we've literally seen people kill other people by driving cars into crowds intentionally. Imagine an unintentional Tesla doing that. I understand this is pretty much, I'm sure we're both fun at parties, but obviously this is a tough conversation. What One, one of the things though, that you mentioned in that commercial- You're frozen. Oh, can you hear me? Okay, you're good now. You're good, okay. All right, and you were freezing a little bit on me too. Um, we can edit that out. So. One of the things, not from the video though, this is, you know, but but on the on the radio, uh, one of the things though that you said in your video um, was that, and I quote you, uh, Tesla self-driving is the worst commercial software I have ever seen. So without getting too deeply technical, can you elaborate on that? Like, have you looked at the source code or are you just saying that because of in your testing every, I think it was eight minutes, this thing is hitting something or, or doing something it shouldn't do? Right, it's, it's, it is making a safety error. Our definition was that the California has a handbook and it says if you, if you are taking the driver's test to get your driver's license, it lists a bunch of things that if you do them, you're out, right? You flunk right there. Okay. So we made like, like, like running a stop sign or turning right out of a left-hand turn lane or you know something stupid like that. Not necessarily that you would cause a crash, but just something you'd get a ticket for right away. Um, and at every eight minutes, it malfunctions. It is a safety malfunction. I challenge anyone to find a single product they've ever used that it was acceptable that it failed every eight minutes. Right. Your hand dryer? I don't think so. That go away. Your refrigerator fails every eight minutes? I don't think so. What? What product can you think of that would that if it failed every eight minutes, you would keep it? You wouldn't say they'd either recall it. Or, or give you your money back or fix it, you know, repair it. And they don't consider it a repair. They just say, no, that's what it does. There's no other product on anything. And this is a self-driving car, a billion lives. When we do self-driving and everybody does self-driving, there's gonna be a billion people in cars at a given moment in the world somewhere, their lives will depend on that software. The self-driving software should be the best software ever written, the most carefully designed, most carefully implemented, the most carefully tested as much as we can. We should do everything we can to make it the best program ever written because a billion lives depend on it. Not the worst program that's ever been sold. I don't mean that there have been products that, that you know, internally were terrible, were worse. This is a product that actually got sold to people and it's for their car. Again, yeah. it's in. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, Essentially, what I what I equate it to is air traffic control software. 
you know, that has been vetted for decades and decades and decades to ensure there's no glitch and we have two 747s flying into each other. You know, it, it has to be, I think, at that level, um, if you are if you are putting that out on the road, just like, you know, two planes colliding, the last thing we need are, to your point, is a billion cars running into things, pedestrians, other cars, another self-driving car, whatever that is. Um, now, Within the last year or so, um, I actually, and I don't know if you know who this person is, but I got I got to interview um, a guy named Doug Demuro. He's a he's a car expert. Um, you know, you, you can see his YouTube videos. He has millions of followers on this. And I asked him this question. Our, our interview was about the future of car technology and security. Uh, you know, where are we in self driving cars? Is this good? Are we good to go? Should we believe Elon Musk? And he said no. He's like, we are decades away from this at best. And his example was, if it's a nice sunny day and, you know, everything is the sun shining, it's not wet out, it's great, you know, pavement, if you will, the car is probably going to do what you want it to do. But I'm sitting here in Chicago and in February when it's snowing like crazy, do I want to trust an AI that doesn't have the experience that I have as a driver, uh, you know, in, in, that, in that environment? And obviously the answer right, that, right now is no to that. But I'm asking you, um, if we are moving towards driverless cars in the future, and that definitely seems like where we're going, what do you think is a reasonable timeline here? Obviously, Elon Musk might be hyping this up. He's a hype man. I've done other videos on him being a charlatan or or a visionary, you know, depending on how you look at him. But what do you think is is a reasonable timeline for driverless cars, just in your experience? I think it's sooner than what you said. It is still years away. What's interesting is that Tesla's not the leader. Tesla's not even close to the leader. Tesla is way back of the pack. Right now, Waymo is, has, has hundreds of absolutely driverless cars. There is no driver, there is no one in the seat driving all over San Francisco. So does Cruise. Waymo has them in Phoenix. Argo AI has them in Houston and Miami. Baidu has them in Beijing and, uh, and Guangzhou. Auto X has them in Shenzhen. We have at least six companies with actual driverless cars driving all over the, some of the biggest cities in, on earth. Um, there is already driverless technology. Now it does have accidents. It was just a report and there have been accidents and, uh, but they're working on it and it is getting better. It's not, if you use Tesla as an, as an example, it would be never, but they're not the leaders. They're not even close to the leaders. Uh, as we said, eight minutes, it fails. Um, the, um, the cruise systems, they go 40,000 miles before they do something stupid, not 10 miles before they do something stupid. Um, wow. Not good enough. 40,000 is not good enough. Humans are better. Wow. But, and they wow. have to improve. They know that, and they are improving it. And it's still years away from real commercial production. But I think we will get there in the five to 10 year time frame. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, and in and, and that vein, none, none, of the, none of the companies that you just mentioned, Waymo, et cetera, um, are any one of the, the car companies that have been out for decades and decades and decades. You didn't mention Mercedes. You didn't mention Ford. You know, these are companies that have decades of experience, uh, you know, in this. So do you think they're they're lagging behind or do you think they'll eventually outclass, let's say, Tesla, uh, given that they have decades of experience, not just uh, in car technology, but the actual safety of a vehicle as well. Like Mercedes has more safety patents on automobiles than anybody on the planet, um, you know, going back 100 plus years. So so what, what do you think about the, you know, the Mercedes and the Fords and everybody in between? Well, it, it's interesting because the names I mentioned, uh, Argo AI, which just got a license to do robo taxis, driverless cars in Miami and Houston, is actually owned by Ford and, and Volkswagen. There you go. Oni AI that just got a license in Beijing is owned by Toyota. Mm. Um, Cruise is owned by GM. Waymo is owned by Google. Um, mm. A lot of these companies have a car. It just doesn't have their name on it. It's kind of strange. I, many of them because they were actually independent companies and these big them up and said hey we got to get into we, we got to learn to do self-driving we're we're behind we'll buy up one of these smaller companies and uh and and so they're actually most of them do have a, a mechanism actually mercedes has a what's called level three level four is what you really call autonomous but level three is a degree of self-driving 
they are the first people actually ever to get an L3 license, a level three license, um, I think in Europe, hmm. but, but they're working on it. They've got their own program that they're working on. There's a ton of people doing this in China. Apparently there's like 10 companies that are doing this. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. So, I mean, and that's, so I, obviously I didn't know that I'm, I'm not completely up on driverless cars like you are, but I, I think that that's really interesting. And I think part of it probably then is, you know, for lack of a better term, the, the sexiness of Tesla, if you will, I mean, they were a, a very hot ticket. It's one of the things I talked to with Doug uh, Demiro as well. You know, he's in his, I think late thirties, give or take um, or so. And he was saying, he's like, yeah, he's like, I grew up with Ferraris and Lamborghinis on my wall. But when I talk to kids now, they all want Teslas. And so I think that part of that is probably the the allure of what the Tesla is, um, you know, maybe Elon Musk being the, the hype man that he is for this. But it's clear that you've got, as you just said, you've got the GMs and the Fords and the Volkswagens, some of the most venerated and oldest companies in the planet that are, are accurately developing this. And so maybe what we've got with Tesla is a marketing problem. And I think that's what your video is speaking to is, hey, like, you know, you're getting the sizzle, but you're not getting the steak. Right. I mean, I, I think that's what you're you're kind of saying here. Yeah, it's more serious than that. Oh, of course, of course. But keeps claiming that Tesla is the world's leader in technology for self-driving cars. And it is not. It isn't even close. There is uh, I did an analogy. Uh, it, um, Waymo and Cruz got their licenses to drive driverless in San Francisco just a few months ago. And they did the announcement. They said, we have an actual license. San Francisco is allowing us to have driverless cars with no safety driver to watch over it, to prove it really will work. And so they put out a big press release and everything. And I put out a tweet and I said, I said, crew or Waymo or crew, I can't remember which one, it, it just, Waymo and Cruise just took off their training wheels. Because until that point, they had to have a safety driver in the car to make sure it didn't do something dumb. They just took off their training wheels and you know, moving forward with their bicycles, and Elon Musk is sitting on his tricycle. That's the level of technological difference. They were right. these guys were driving a bicycle, but they had their training wheels on. They just took the training wheels off. They took the safety driver out, and now it's all on its own. But Elon Musk doesn't have a bicycle. He's got a tricycle. It, it can't do anything that these people can do, and it's mm -hmm. just so far behind. But his hype machine. Is is he? It's just constant. He's a hundred million people. He can he can sit his at his phone, and in and in two minutes he can have a hundred million people experience his latest thought. That's amazing, right? That's yeah. the, and he keeps telling you how far ahead they are and how stupid everybody else is, literally saying they're stupid. They have no idea what they're doing when they're doing things way better than what his stuff is doing, yeah. and people believe it because it's the only story they hear. Nobody's out there. I mean, Waymo, it, you, you might have heard of it, but mm -hmm. oh, yeah. But, but you don't hear it about it on the news every day. No. You hear about it, Elon Musk every single day on the news. And so that everybody just assumes they're the leader. Yeah. And they're not. And they're falling farther behind every day because this is just terrible software. It's just unimaginably bad. Yeah. It, in fact, it's designed wrong, it's implemented wrong. They don't test, do they? Okay. Do you think that they test it? Do they have a test lab, not a lab, but like a parking lot where they go out and they put various objects in front of the car, like I did, and see what it runs over and what it doesn't run over? Do they run that test? I, I Maybe they don't run the test. How, how can the test engineering department should be fired if that isn't one of their tests? You got to know what you can, what you're going to run over. Or they yeah. do have that. And then what? And it fails the test and they put it on the road anyway. They if, Do they know that? I, I don't get it. It doesn't make, it, yeah. it does make, they're idiots. I mean, it's just incompetent. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Every level. Right. It well, it doesn't work. Yeah. Well, well, and God forbid they're using that in their SpaceX rockets. <laughs> you know, if you're thinking about it that way, you know, if they're, they're moving to, you know, astronaut lists, you know, rockets and all that kind of stuff too. Uh, hopefully they're not leveraging this, but you would hope that they would be testing these things in the same way that, you know, we require all cars here through, I think it's the NTSB to be crashed and tested. You know, right. you have to have a certain level of tolerances for impact and all those kinds of things. You, you would hope that they do that. But um, I wanted to ask you um, pretty much one more thing. And that's in your, in your commercial, 
um, you're basically um, calling on Congress to put a halt to self-driving cars right now, or maybe it's just Tesla, um, if you want to clarify that. But can you explain what exactly you're asking our government uh, for here? And also, have you had um, responses, good or bad, from members of Congress or senators, uh, you know, uh, as a result of the, the campaign you've just started? Um, well, so their National Highway Transportation Safety Ag Agency, which we call NHTSA, right. NHTSA is responsible for car safety. They pass rules and say, you have to do this and you can't do that. For instance, recently, it came out that Tesla was not stopping at stop signs. It would come into an intersection, look around and say, there's nobody here. Why should I stop? And it would just kind of roll through the, the stop sign and keep going which is technically illegal, but also technically what an awful lot of people really do. So Tesla programmed it to do that because they didn't want to have to stop when there was no reason to. It got out, somebody published a paper on it, and then NHTSA came to Tesla and said, you can't do that. You can't program it to break the law. Mm -hmm. And Tesla explained a bit, and then eventually they changed it. And, it, mm -hmm. and NHTSA pressured them through their regulatory authority and said, you, have to, you can't do that. You have to stop at the stop sign like the law says. Right. So they that's what they do. They make rules. They they usually make the rules when something bad happens. But their charter actually says they're supposed to stop things before bad things. We don't have right. to wait for a child to be killed in an in, unambiguously killed in a crosswalk by a, a model uh, by an F, a full self driving car. We mm -hmm. could just wait and wait to sacrifice a child, and then we could do what we need to do, or we can do it now before we do that. That's that's the question. NHTSA has the power to do this. My answer is NHTSA should pass a rule. It should be really easy. I don't think there should be any objection. You can't put your car, your self-driving car on the road until you prove it doesn't run over children in crosswalks. And how, how do you do that? You set, you have a, you know, a set of government testing like you saw before, you know, with the crash dummies, except this is, you have setups. You put various sized dummies in front of the car and you see if it stops. You know, you say, oh, and if it stops, you say, that's good. You pass. If it runs them over, you fail. Put together a test like that. Just, you know, have 50 different scenarios and make sure it does it. And then you can go, you know, and then you can go back on the road. But everybody needs to do that, including Waymo and those guys. They should have to do it, too. Why do we allow things on our roads that will kill children? It just doesn't make sense. Send them back to the lab, fix the bug then you can put it back out on the road. Right, and that I think that makes a lot of sense. And and uh, Dan, thank you so much for your time here. If if uh, and unfortunately we have to we have to cut this off now. But if people want to learn more about you or your efforts with the Don Project, or even just watch that you know thirty second ad of those poor mannequin children getting mowed over by a Tesla, um, what's the, what's the best place to find you or follow you or learn about the, you or the Don Project? So the Dawn Project is dawnproject.com, D-A-W-N project. Um, and I have a Twitter handle. It's at real Dan O'Dowd. Sort of have to spell it out without the apostrophe. D-A-N, or it's real Dan O'Dowd, R-E-A-L-D-A-N-O-D-O-W-D. -O -O and I put a lot of stuff out, but basically every single day we put out a video of a Tesla doing something stupid, um, you know, running somebody off the road or crashing, you know, into something. Mm -hmm. and you know, that's just, we just go on YouTube and we look at all the videos and we find the stupid things it does. And we cut, you know, we make a short little video showing it doing that. Um, yeah. And plus, of course, we have general announcements and, and commercials and things as they go along. Wow. Wow. Well, well, thank you. This is, this has been very illuminating. Obviously everybody here and every, all of my listeners and viewers are, are know what a Tesla is. Uh, you know, obviously we've all heard about the self-driving features, you know, wave of the future and all of that. And so, while this is a bit of a depressing you know, uh, conversation, it is a very important one, I think, that we need to have, because obviously, if we can prevent needless injury or death, uh, you know, by, by making people aware of this, I, I think it's a, really, it's a rather important thing. So Dan O'Dowd, founder of the Don Project and CEO of Green Hills Software, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. Take care.